What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. In this video, we're gonna be comparing the Lowrance Elite FS unit to the Hummingbird Helix unit. We're gonna be giving you side-by-side -side image comparisons of the exact same spots graphed on the exact same days to show you which unit gives you the best overall image quality. Let's get into it. Before we get into the image comparisons, I wanna give you a few call-outs about these units. First up, I got both these units about two years ago. This means I have a lot of experience using these units and pretty much know what the best settings are in each situation. But that also means that there's been some changes to these units since I got them. First up is the price. When I got these units initially, they were both around the $1,200 price point, but now the Elite FS unit has dropped to $1,000. And this is actually the Hummingbird Helix Gen 3 unit, which was at $1,200, but now there's the new Gen 4 unit, which is around $1,600 dollars for the side imaging model. This means that if you're going to pick up a Humbert Helix now, it's going to be a little bit more expensive and it's a next gen unit, but you can still find some of these gen 3 units out there around the same price point. So that's the first call out. The second call out is that I did update these units to the newest software update right before I did this test. So hopefully we have the latest and greatest software in these units to get the best images that they can produce. Finally, I did notice that when I took screenshots with the Humminbird compared to the Lowrance, the image resolution on the Humminbird screenshots was a little bit lower than the Lowrance. What this means is that the Humminbird screenshots have a little bit of a graininess to them that you don't see on the Lowrance. But when you actually look at these units on the lake and actually look at the screen, the graininess is not there. So what that means is that the image quality of the Humminbird screenshots is going to be a little bit lower. The only way I could really get around that was to actually try to record the fish finder screen, but then you get glare from the sun and all that stuff. So basically what I'm trying to say is that the actual picture quality of the Humminbird unit is going to be a little bit less than the Lowrance. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at these images it should still give you a really good idea of what these units are capable of though i would say that the hummingbird looks slightly better in real life when you're actually on the lake than it does in the images i'm about to show you now without further ado let's jump straight into the image comparison starting with side imaging Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the side imaging view from both the Humminbird and the Lowrance fish finder of the exact same brush pile on the same day. I tried to graph these brush piles using the same path, the same angle. I didn't always nail the exact path every time. I might've been to the right or to the left by three or four feet, but I tried to give as close of a comparison as possible and get the same image from both units. In both these images, you can see that the tree stands out really well on the right side of the screen. There's a nice shadow cast by the tree. You can see all of the limbs and the target separation is great on both units. Honestly, from a practical perspective, they're pretty much identical and both will show you exactly what's going on under the lake and to the side of your boat. One thing I did notice when I was out in the lake is that I could get a little bit sharper image with the Humminbird unit than I could with the Lowrance unit. If you look closely at these images, you can see that the Lowrance side imaging has a little bit more of a fuzzy or hazy look around the limbs of the trees compared to the Humminbird unit. The reason for that is because on your Humminbird Helix, you have a sharpness setting, which basically allows you to adjust how sharp the image looks. The Lowrance unit doesn't have this sharpness setting and overall the Lowrance doesn't have as many settings that allow you to adjust the image to your preference as opposed to the Humminbird which has a lot of different settings like contrast, sensitivity, and sharpness. Now this can be a good thing and a bad thing as we'll see here in a minute but what it means at least for this image is that you can get a little bit crisper side imaging image and a better crisper tree on side scan with this Humminbird Helix unit. In our next image, we have a nice offshore rock pile with a brush pile right below those rocks. In this image, again, you can see the rocks clearly on both the Humminbird and the Lowrance unit. You get nice crisp, crisp shadows, you get nice target separation and image clarity of the brush pile and the rocks. Again, for all intents and purposes, you can see the exact same thing on both units. It's not like one looks drastically worse than the other. Maybe the Humminbird is slightly clearer, but at the same time, you can actually pick out the school of fish, which is some crappie around the brush pile on the Lowrance image, a little bit easier than you can on the Humminbird. Now, it's hard to tell if this is because 
of the graininess that I mentioned earlier in the screenshots. Sometimes when you take screenshots with this Hummingbird unit, because the image of the screenshot has lower resolution, it's harder to pick out tiny dots like those little crappie. I didn't really notice that big of a difference on the lake between these two in terms of the ability to see fish on side scan, but it really shows up in the image images here on the screen. So it's really hard to tell if it was just the graininess of the picture or if there's a big difference there. There might be, I'm not gonna be able to say for sure, uh, it's impossible without going back and like having both units running at the exact same time on the exact same brush pile. But either way, they both look great. And honestly, I don't see that much of a difference between these two units. In this third image, we have another brush pile that's sitting on the edge of an offshore drop off. that drops from about seven foot of water into 30 feet of water. This brush pile is a lot more densely compacted, has a lot more limbs, and therefore you're not going to get as much target separation in either image, just because there's so many limbs and branches closely clumped together. Honestly, these images look very similar in my opinion. I don't see much of a difference. And from a practical perspective, both units do a great job identifying cover, structure, fish, rocks, things like that on side imaging. And I wouldn't really notice that big of a difference between them if I was going to use them on the lake. Next, let's compare the down imaging or down scan view on these two units. In this image, we have a nice brush pile that's sitting offshore in 10 to 15 feet of water. The first thing you'll probably notice is that these images don't look identical or absolutely the same. And that's because I scan these brush piles at slightly different angles. One, I scanned maybe two or three feet to the right. Another, I went right down the center. And that will just cause the image to look barely different. I'm not talking about like a massive difference where I'm 20 feet to the right or to the left. I just missed it by a little bit. And so these images aren't going to look perfectly the same, but for all intents and purposes, you're going to be able to see what the image looks like. Another thing you're gonna notice is that on the Humminbird, you have a lot darker background. That black background really pops and it allows those limbs to really stand out. You get great image and target separation on that Humminbird unit. And compared to the Lowrance, it looks just a little bit more crisp. Now, the reason for this again is because the Humminbird has a lot more settings that you can mess with to clean up the background of the image, pop the brush piles out and things like that. On the other hand, with Lowrance, you really only have a couple of settings you can adjust, the main one being contrast, which doesn't give you enough control to really darken that background like you see in the Humminbird image. Now, I will say it took me a lot of time to learn how to dial in this Humminbird unit to get such a clear image like you see on the screen here. The settings need to be adjusted based on the bottom hardness of your lake, the water clarity, the season of the year, how much algae there is in the water. And it takes a lot of time and experience messing with these units to get them perfectly set up as you see in these pictures. The Lorantzian, on the other hand, is a lot more user friendly and comes pretty much ready to go out of the box. You're not going to get the perfectly clear image in every single scenario, but overall, the default settings or close to default is going to give you a great image every time. Now to be clear, I'm not using the default Lorantz settings for this image comparison. I've made several adjustments to improve the image quality and you can make adjustments to make the image look better on Lorantz. It's just that by default, the Lorantz settings are going to be better out of the box than the Hummingbird. But again, I did have to make several adjustments. So this is not by any means the default settings in this image or any of the images you're gonna see from the Lorantz going forward. With the Humminbird on your hand though, if you mess up the settings and put them a little bit off of where they need to be, the image will look really bad. And it's very easy to actually screw up the settings on this Humminbird unit, and you're gonna get some crazy looking stuff if you're not careful. Therefore, with the Lowrance, I would highly recommend this unit for your more beginner offshore anglers, your beginner electronics users, because it is really great just out of the box, gives you a great image right away. But with the Humminbird, if you're a more advanced user, you're going to be able to dial in those settings and get this perfect crisp image on down imaging like you see here. It just depends on when, whether you wanna put the time and the effort in to learn the settings, or if you just want a graph that basically gives you the settings right out of the box, and you can just go out and fish. Now, for those of you who don't wanna spend your time dialing in these settings and learning how to use them in all different water conditions and things like that, I've actually created some sonar settings guides on our website, fishthemoment.com. 
these sonar settings guides give you all of my personal settings that I've learned with these units and they help you adjust them based on the situation you're going to find yourself in on the lake. And right now we're actually doing a Black Friday sale where you're going to get a big discount on these sonar settings guides. So head over to fishthemoment.com to check out the sonar settings guides and get the right settings for these units so you don't have to spend hours and hours like I did figuring it all out and you're gonna get the best image right away. Next up, let's compare another down imaging image between these two units. In this image, we have a more densely packed brush pile with more limbs and leaves and things around it, and also some crappie. Both these images look pretty much the same in my opinion. The Humbert image again has a little bit clearer background, but other than that, in terms of just recognizing what you're looking at and seeing what's going on around that brush pile, they're pretty much identical. And overall, you're not going to have any practical difference identifying fish or cover with both of these down imaging views. Really, it's just how pretty and clear that image is on the screen. Here's one more down imaging comparison of a brush pile that's absolutely loaded with crappie. One thing that's interesting about this image is that the crappie pop a lot better on the Lawrence unit compared to the Humminbird unit. You can see those little dots a lot clearer. And that's one of the advantages of having more feedback in the background on the Lawrence unit. In general, the standard settings for the Lawrence are going to pop fish a little bit better than they will on the Humminbird. And even if you're in a wide range of water clarities, different times of the year, bottom hardness, stuff like that, the default settings or the automatic settings on this Lawrence unit are going to give you really good fish returns. You're gonna see those crappies, see those bass really well on the down imaging. On the flip side, with the hummingbird, you sometimes have to have a trade-off between how clear those fish look and how clear the brush piles and the limbs of trees look. These are the same settings I use when graphing that tree that looks absolutely beautiful on down imaging that has these spread apart branches. However, when you get to a more compact, tightly grouped school of fish or brush pile, you're not going to have as much target separation with those crappie or with that brush. Now, I can adjust the settings to get those crappie to pop more. I didn't on purpose in this image just to give you guys an idea of what these two look like compared side by side with the same settings from before but that just goes to show that to get a really clear fish return with this hummingbird you're gonna have to change up those settings make some micro adjustments compared to when you were just graphing for a pretty limb or tree picture like we had before and for some anglers you may just not want to make all those micro adjustments on the water all the time and that's where the Lawrence again is going to be a really good unit for a beginning offshore angler for a beginning electronics user because out of the box it'll just give you some good settings that will show you the fish so you show you the brush and for all intents and purposes do the exact same thing as the hummingbird let's finish by comparing the 2d sonar view on both these units this is where we're going to start seeing our first major difference between the Humminbird and the Lowrance. In my opinion, I've always found that the Lowrance units have better 2D sonar than any Humminbird units I use. I'm not exactly sure the specifics on that with like the hardware and stuff like that, but I have found that there are just better color palettes and better settings on the Lowrance out of the box that really pop fish and trees better than they do on a Humminbird. And I'll show you some image examples here. In this first image, we have the same tree we graphed earlier with down imaging that had the nice spread apart limbs. On the Lawrence, you can still get that nice target separation on 2D sonar, but with the Humminbird, the tree kind of looks like a big glob or just a mass on the screen. And actually, this is what 2D sonar looked like for most of my life, even when I was graphing 15 years ago. But now with some of the newer technology, the Lawrence units with their 2D sonar give you pretty good target separation, which is really, really nice. In this next image comparison, we have a brush pile that's much more densely packed together. Compared to the first brush pile, which only had a couple of limbs, the target separation on both units is not very good just because there's so many limbs in this tree that are squished together. This really mitigates the difference between the Lowrance and the Humminbird, and the only major differences we're going to see in this image is one, the color palettes themselves, which is just down to personal preference, and also how strong the returns are of the fish around this brush pile. Here are the fish pointed out on the Lowrance and the Humminbird. You'll notice that these crappie look a lot smaller, and the arches are a lot less pronounced on the Humminbird compared to the Lowrance. 
This was done intentionally because on the Hummingbird unit, I can actually adjust how strong the returns are going to be on that 2D sonar a little bit easier. And I can make the crappie appear either bigger or smaller in terms of the size of the arches or the dots using the settings on the Hummingbird. You can somewhat do the same thing on the Lowrance, but it's a little bit trickier and it'll make the brush pile somewhat disappear. The reason you want to do this is because if I'm graphing a brush pile for let's say bass instead of crappie, I can make the crappie have a small return and the bass have a bigger return because a bass might be two to three times the size of a crappie. Again, there's ways you can do this with both units, but overall the hummingbird gives you a little bit more flexibility in determining the size of the fish on 2D sonar with the settings. In our third comparison, we have a brush pile that's loaded with crappie. And here's the down imaging comparison image of the exact same brush pile. You can see all those dots. When we go back to 2D sonar, you can see that on the hummingbird, you're going to have those small blue and slightly red arches. And on the Lowrance, you're going to have those yellow blobs. Those are gonna be your fish. There are so many fish in this brush pile that it's kind of hard to determine whether you're looking at brush or fish. And that's the advantage of using down scan or down imaging. But at the same time, you'll notice that the returns are much stronger on the Lowrance just because I am trying to show both the fish and the brush at the same time. If you take the sensitivity and stuff way down, you can get similar returns to what you see on the Hummingbird, but it ruins the overall image. And again, that's why the Hummingbird is a little bit more flexible, gives you a little bit more ability to adjust what you're seeing. And for an advanced electronics user, that can be very helpful. But for someone who just wants to see all the crappie in the brush top, then the Lowrance will get the job done. Now for my final takeaway from this test. Overall, both units performed extremely well. They both had great image quality in down imaging and in side imaging with good target separation, fish identification, and just overall the look of the image. I also would say that the Lowrance is again more user friendly, better for beginning fish finder users, but the Hummingbird is great if you want to dial in your settings and spend time mastering your electronics craft. And what I find is that when I really need to dial in my image, especially in really muddy water situations, when there's a lot of debris and high water situations, stuff like that, I'll go with the Hummingbird unit because I can filter out plankton blooms or algae blooms and all these sorts of things with the hummingbird, which I can't do with the Lowrance. However, if I'm just going out fishing for the day and the conditions are pretty stable, I'll grab the Lowrance unit because I can just throw it on the boat, the settings are ready to go out of the box and I don't have to necessarily mess with anything throughout the day, making it a little bit less stressful of a fishing day. Another key difference between these two units is that the Elite FS is a touchscreen unit, so you can actually click the screen to go through all the settings, where the Hummingbird unit is an analog unit, and you basically have to use the keypad to go through all the different settings, making it a little bit easier to navigate the Lowrance if you're used to touch screens. But if you don't like touch screens, the Hummingbird may be the way to go because it just has buttons and it's more of an analog, old school unit. Finally, another big difference that is really important to call out that's not specific to just these two units, but is kind of just more in general for the two brands, is that Hummingbird is going to have the Lake Master mapping card and Lowrance is going to have the Sea Map mapping card. In some regions of the country, Lake Master on the Hummingbird is going to give you better quality contour line maps or bathymetry maps on your lake. And this is extremely important if you're graphing offshore. Being able to have one foot contours in HD quality allows you to find really subtle offshore spots that a lot of anglers are gonna miss if they don't have that one foot high quality map. Again, in my region of the country here in like the Ozarks, Oklahoma area, the Hummingbird Lake Master mapping is a lot better than the Lowrance mapping. However, on the East Coast, the sea map mapping is usually a little bit better than the lake master mapping. So if you can't decide based on all the stuff I've talked about before, or if you feel like the images are pretty much the same, then one really big consideration you may want to make is which mapping product has more of your lakes available. I'll leave links down in the description below letting you know which lakes are in HD quality for each brand of unit. I'll just link those down there with like the lake list for both chips. So check that out. And if you do get these units, I would highly recommend 
getting those HD quality mapping cards using those links down below. Another thing I want to call out is that if you are interested in picking up either of these units or any other units that you might be interested in, head over to thebasstank.com. The Bass Tank is my go-to supplier for bass fishing electronics and they also do all the installation on my boat. All of these units you see around me are units that I can put on my boat. They Frankenstein my 18 foot Triton so I can run like 12 different units on it. I don't run them all at once, I just run one unit at a time. But the, it allows me to do tests like this where I can actually compare units side by side on the exact same day. So go support the Bass Tank that helps support this channel, make these reviews possible. And they also have a great team there that will help you get the right electronics for your boat and get them installed properly. And if you're still here after all of the promotions and the takeaways and everything like that, one, thank you. You're a true Fish the Moment fan. And also, if you're interested, head over to fishthemoment.com and check out our new sonar interpretation guide we put out. It's on sale with the Black Friday sale I mentioned earlier, and it gives you three different examples of every single type of cover, structure, and fish that we encounter on the lake. And you're going to be able to get specific examples of what each object or species of fish or bait fish or anything looks like on your fish finder with down imaging, side imaging, and 2D sonar. Hopefully this will help you identify what you're actually seeing on your fish finder and not only what settings to use so that way you can find more fish and catch more fish this year. Thanks again for checking out this video and we'll see you all next one.